this is quite an interesting problem and I am going to solve it in this video. So, what you see here in this diagram is a cylinder open at both the ends and having a radius of r and it is resting on a horizontal surface maybe a table or something and inside this hollow cylinder are placed two ball bearings. The condition that r is less than two times small r ensures that these two ball bearings do not fall off to the base, but they are stacked up one over the other. We are required to find the force exerted by the ball bearings onto the cylinder at the contact points this point here and this point here and next we are supposed to find the smallest weight of the cylinder which will prevent it from tipping over and lastly if the cylinder has a base a base here then what will be the minimum weight for it to remain in equilibrium and not tip over. So, before we begin writing equations let us do quick analysis of the information provided in the problem and discuss the approach to solving the problem. First we could draw a bd with the ball bearings then using the equilibrium equations we could determine the reaction forces acting on the bearings at the contact points here and here. The forces exerted by the bearings onto the cylinder will be just opposite to reaction forces. Next we could draw the free body diagram of the cylinder itself and find moments of all the forces about the tipping point. This is the tipping point. We can then find the minimum weight of the cylinder that would ensure that the net moment is in counterclockwise direction in this direction. So, the net moment in counterclockwise direction would imply that the cylinder would not tip over. Next we could do a similar exercise assuming the cylinder has a base and examine if it will ever tip over. So, that is the general approach to solving this problem. So, the first thing is to draw a BD of the two ball bearings. So, here in this picture you see the FBD of the two ball bearings, the reaction forces R A and R B are at the two contact points with the cylinder, R C is the reaction force due to the contact with the horizontal surface, the weights W B of the two ball bearings are acting at their centers and R D is the force of interaction between the two ball bearings. Their magnitude is same, but their directions are just the opposite. Their line of action is, is the same and it passes through the centers of both the ball bearings. Are we ready for uh, writing the equilibrium equations? Maybe not. We have to first determine the angle these two contact forces make with the horizontal. So, let us first determine the dimensions from the geometry of the problem. As you can see here the distance O p is the sum of the radius of the two ball bearings. So, it is 2 r O q which is one side of the right angle triangle O p q is 2 r the diameter of the cylinder minus twice the radius of the ball bearings. So, it is 2 r minus 2 small r and therefore, p q would be equal to under root o p square minus o q square plugging in the values of o p and o q from here we get p q is equal to 2 under root r within bracket 2 small r minus r. So, now we are ready to write the equations of equilibrium for both the bearings. So, let us first take up the top bearing and we have two equations for this bearing and two equations for the bottom bearing. In all we have four equations of equilibrium. 
I think we should first check whether we can solve all the unknowns R A, R B, R C, R D. We have four unknowns and we have four equations, so we can solve for them. And the first equation sigma f x equal to zero is minus R A and R D will be making an angle of theta, this theta with the x axis and therefore, we have R D cos theta and this will simplify to R A is equal to R D cos theta. That is our equation number 1. Now, we take the equation of equilibrium in y axis sigma f y equal to 0 is R D sin theta which is the y component of R D minus W B equal to 0 and that gives us R D equal to W B upon sin theta. Now, let us take up the, the other bearing and sigma f x equal to 0 gives us R b in positive x direction minus R d cos theta because it will be pointing in the minus x direction that will give us R b equal to R d cos theta. Note that both R a and R b are equal because both are equal to R d cos theta. Now, we plug in the value of R d from equation number 2 and we get W b upon sin theta times cos theta which is W b cot theta and plugging in the values of O q and P q we get this term and this will simplify to R b equal to W b within bracket R minus R upon under root r within bracket 2 small r minus r. This is also equal to r a. Now, we have to also find the fourth reaction r c and which we will find out from the equilibrium equation f y equal to 0. This is the fourth equi equilibrium equation r c minus w b minus the y component of R d that is minus R d sin theta equal to 0 will give us R c equal to 2 W b. So, from the four equations we have computed the magnitude of the two reactions R a and R b. Which is this value and R c equal to 2 W b. Note that these are the reaction forces acting on the ball bearings and the force exerted by the ball bearings on the cylinder would be of the same magnitude, but opposite in direction. That is the force exerted by this ball bearing on the cylinder would be equal to R a in this direction. This is the force acting on the cylinder. Similarly, the force on the cylinder due to this ball bearing is R b and would be pointing in this direction. Now, to find out the minimum weight required for preventing the tipping over of the cylinder, we will have to draw the F b d of the cylinder and we shall do so in the next slide. So, here is the F b d of the cylinder and you can see the force exerted by the ball bearing at point A is R A in this direction and the force exerted by the bottom ball bearing on the cylinder is R B acting at point B. The weight of the cylinder W is acting downwards and its point of application is the center of the cylinder. On the basis of our intuition, we can say that if the weight of the cylinder is large then it will remain in equilibrium and will not tip over, but if its weight is small then it is there is it is a likely to tip over like this. A question arises why should the normal contact force act at point N of the cylinder? Well, the answer is that we assume that the cylinder just begins to tip over 
and leaves contact with the horizontal surface except the point N and therefore the normal force acts only at this point N and in this position where it is lost contact with the surface except this point we evaluate the moment of all the forces about this point N and if the net moment is in counterclockwise direction then the cylinder regains its equilibrium position and if the net moment of all the forces is in clockwise direction then it will indeed tip over. So we impose the condition that the net counterclockwise moment is always positive and that gives us the minimum weight W of the cylinder that will ensure that the cylinder will not tip over. So we compute the moment of all the forces acting on the cylinder about point N. The moment M N assuming counterclockwise moment as positive will be equal to W R this force W has a moment of equal to R and is in counterclockwise direction. The second moment is due to the force RB and that too produces a counterclockwise moment. Its moment arm is small r, the radius of the ball bearing. The force RA will have a clockwise moment and its moment arm would be the distance AL. So before we proceed further we should find out the distance AN. AN as you can see is equal to R the radius of the ball bearing plus the distance PQ and PQ we have already found out in the previous slide. So let us write it down here AN equal to R plus PQ and is equal to R plus 2 under root R 2 R minus R. We will use this value and plug it in here. So, MN would equal WR plus RBR and as we have already found out RA is equal to RB. So, we will replace this RA equal to RB. So, minus RB and AN is equal to R plus 2 under root R 2 R minus R. RB is common to both the terms. R minus R minus 2 under root this will cancel out. So, we will be left with M n equal to W times R minus R B 2 times R times 2 R minus R. Now, we impose the condition that for the cylinder to not trip over and remain in equilibrium M n in counterclockwise direction should be equal to or greater than 0 because we want this to be positive to prevent its tipping over. So, the right hand side of this expression should also be greater than 0. Therefore, W R minus R B 2 times R 
in bracket 2r minus r should also be greater than 0. This will simplify to w r should be greater than we take this term on the right hand side 2 times now we plug in the value of r b which we found out in the previous slide which is w b r minus r upon under root r 2 r minus r times under root r 2 r minus r. This will cancel out and we shall have w r can be transferred to the denominator on the other side should be greater than 2 upon r times w b r minus r. So, that gives us the minimum value of w the weight of the cylinder which will ensure that the cylinder remains in equilibrium and does not tip over. So, this is our answer. Now, we take up the last part in which we assume that the cylinder has a base resting on the horizontal surface and then find out carrying out the similar exercise whether it will tip over. So, here you see the cylinder now having a base here and we have drawn the FBD of the cylinder similar to what we did in the previous slide. The only difference is inclusion of this force RC. RC is the force exerted by the ball bearing onto the base of the cylinder and it will be in downward direction. So, we do a similar exercise add up the moments of all the forces about point n and check whether it is positive. Here are the set of equations the moment about point n assuming counterclockwise moment as positive is equal to w r which is the moment of the weight plus r b r the moment of this force r b minus r a into this term which is the moment of the force r a about point n and is minus because it is in clockwise direction. But now we have to add this term which is the moment of the force r c. Now r c times the moment arm is 2 r minus small r. This is 2 r and this is r. So, this distance is 2 r minus small r. Now, we simplify this plug in the value r b and we get this term which further simplifies to w r plus 2 w b r and as you can notice that irrespective of the value of w this entire term would always be positive and therefore, m n the moment of all the forces about point n would always be positive and greater than 0 and that implies that the cylinder does not tip over for any value of w. So, when the cylinder has a base the inference is that no matter what the weight of the cylinder is it will remain in equilibrium all the time and will never tip over. So, in case you have any questions or comments please write them below and I will try to respond as early as possible and if you like the video please do not forget to give thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.